People don't see me when I just waffle. When I don't listen to my emotional authority or the splenic hit, I get no recognition. And then I'm like, why is no one listening? This shit's good. And then I listen back to it and I'm like, I've said a lot of things, but I haven't actually said a lot of things. <laughs> and every time it's like, if I'm just speaking to fill silences, like if I'm trying to create for the sake of it, I see it literally social, social media is literally like my, my evidence board for that energetics. It's like, okay, well, am I trying to fill silences right now? Those posts don't get a lot of engagement every time I do them because it feels right in the moment or because emotionally it was a 80% yes. Cause let's face it. We never get a hundred percent emotional clarity. Then I get good engagement. Then I get people like commenting on stuff. Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves. I'm your host, Jessica Locke, a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? I used to be so paranoid about like the production, like things have to be perfect, the audio. And then I'm like, I think that was just my insecurity or like at least my brain my logical brain it's like I can control this everything else cannot be controlled well and as we're seeing we were like I say unprepared we were not unprepared but people just want the raw stuff we're done with polished oh yes what a great way to start this episode <laughs> I'm gonna start with that exactly <laughs> not oh my god yes yes welcome Adina <laughs> to the Hi. podcast I'm so excited to chat with you today. I know we're going to go deep, we're going to go everywhere, but also just to connect, I feel like there's so much we can talk about. So Adina is a 5-1 projector, an international business coach, sales expert, author, and speaker for visionary entrepreneurs and host of the Wealth Rebellion podcast. Welcome, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining me. So for those who don't know who Adina is, who is Adina today? <laughs> An enigma. <laughs> An enigma. <laughs> That's someone, it. <laughs> someone who doesn't take themselves too seriously. No, honestly, I, I don't take myself seriously whatsoever. Who am I? Um, exactly what you said, but also a romanticy lover. So if there's mm -hmm. anyone who loves romance, fantasy romance books, I'm your girl. <gasps> Oh my gosh, I've been, it's been all over the internets or TikTok, maybe I'm late to the game, like Akatar, like the yeah, core um, of thorns and roses, if I'm remembering right. Yeah, yeah, among among these things, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I've also been like obsessed with Kat Ross, I keep forgetting her books, like The Fourth Talisman, The Fourth Element, something like this, but I love getting lost in fantasy world, I don't know why, Same. it's been so fun lately. It's been, I've denied myself for the longest times because I, when I was 11, the Harry Potter book was just released in Germany. Yeah. And so naturally I've been waiting for my owl ever since, you know, when you're 11 and you yeah. read a book and I was just like, oh, that's why I'm being bullied. That's why, because I need to wait for my owl. Everything makes sense. Yeah. Same here. It still hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> it still hasn't arrived. I'm still waiting. Hogwarts, come on. And so I think like, as I was growing older, I don't know if you feel the same. As I was growing older, like I still enjoyed my fantasy books, but people kept telling me like, oh, you need to grow out of that. It's just kitty books. And only like last year in August, did I allow myself to fully, like I read a little bit, like I read like, um, Shadow and Bone years and years ago and I absolutely loved it and then only recently I was just like oh, I really enjoyed the fantasy and it turns out there's a whole bloody community and I'm like where have you been all my life oh I honestly now that you're talking about this I think I hadn't read any so much of the books that I was reading was self-development because yeah. you know so fascinated about growth and like human psychology and then I got to a point where I'm like I don't want to read any of that anymore and then Sometimes last year yeah I started picking up, like you said, like sometimes I just need to get lost. And I think watching the shows was easy for me, but reading the books, I never dare venture after yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah. 
Oh, look at us. Look at us reclaiming those parts of us and also reading without guilt. I used to feel like, oh, like so much of my conditioning was like, you have to do all the things you have to do, responsibilities before you enjoy yourself. Yep. You have to earn it. Undefined hearts. I don't remember. I don't remember if I had your design or not. I know I had it and then when when we did record it back in the days, but undefined hearts. Just like I have to prove that I've earned my rest. I have a defined heart, but the conditioning there is proving for others. That's what I've noticed the difference. If I'm proving for myself, it's very healthy. It feels like, oh my gosh, I can do it. When I'm proving for others, like I can do this. That's when I overextend. That's when it's not the best for me so really really cool have you got a defined root I don't remember no no so I have a defined root what I noticed and I've only found this out at the beginning of last year that with my defined root I like I try to appear busy like I I I'm not pressured to be busy but mm. I've, I've I've learned to look busy so that I don't get pressured by yeah. other people because yeah. my mom used to say things like um oh well you can't be that busy if you're not that stressed mm. yeah like I would be just yeah fine just give me the thing it's just like well I can't you can't have you clearly don't have enough to do child and I'm like <gasps> oh no I have enough to do I'm just not like losing my head over it oh no no here's more stuff and so that I don't get overwhelmed I learn to look busy it's interesting yeah. yeah I remember you telling me that and that blew my mind because how are you supposed <laughs> to be at ease? And then learning about projectors and how, you know, sometimes we do get spurts and we can be very efficient and then we rest. And re almost for me, reclaiming that rest. How has that process been? Like, how did human design find you? Oh God. So I'll try to keep it short, but it's a bit of a longer story. So I didn't find it until like six years ago, five or six years. I forget the exact date. So in that ballpark, very close to when I started my business. I finally found out that I can do business coaching because I started off with life coaching and I realized that everyone just comes to me for like dating advice. And I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to fix people's relationships. That's yeah. just not me. Um, and then eventually I'm just like, well, I'm really good at sales, the sales psychology, right? So in my system, like how do I like interrelationships, et cetera, et cetera. That's a system I'm here to master. How do, how do we communicate with each other? And, um, Eventually, I took this mentorship program. I think it was like three or four months. I can't remember exactly. It was like quite a high, like quite an expensive mentorship program. And it was just like, okay, well, here's how you can sell high ticket um, because I wanted to increase and scale my business. And then I was the perfect student. Yes, I was the per. I did everything by the book. I did everything she said. And then by the end of the program, I'm like, I'm literally doing everything you said. And I actually have less clients. Oh. Like I, I have more trouble than I did oh. before. And I'm like, how can that be? And she couldn't argue with me. So she's just like, no, I see that you're doing everything. So it wasn't even, it wasn't even a thing where she's just like, are you sure you do? Like she could yeah. see, yeah. right? Yeah. And she's just like, have you heard of human design? And I'm like, no, she's just like, well, go and Google the thing and do the test and then come back and tell me what it is. And I'm like, it says I'm a projector. And she's just like, well, of course, all of this is going to feel hard and not work for you. And I'm like, what are you telling me now? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, why didn't you tell me at the beginning of the program? <laughs> I had to do a lot of, I had to do a lot of forgiveness work around that because that was my question. I'm like, why are you telling me this now? But I think she didn't know. And I think she was using, like, she was doing the best she could at the time. I've like, I've forgiven that part and I don't, I've learned a lot of it in the meantime, but boy, was I bitter for a long time. I'm just like, I've spent so much money and now you're telling me. Um, but that's when human design ended. And as a first line, the moment I heard about it, I felt so seen when I read, read the project mm -hmm. a bit that I was just like, oh, oh, hello. And then yeah. you know how we get that hyper focus, like as first lines and just like, okay, well, this is me for like two years now. <laughs> You're right, right. Just let me embody this whole identity so I can learn from it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how human design came into my life and it hasn't left me since, thank God. Oh, I really appreciate you sharing how you did all the things like, you know, to a T and yet your version of success was so far from what was promised. I'm sure in the program from other students. And I think so many of us are doing, we can be such perfect students doing all the things and then finding the weight 
Why is it not working? How is it confronting that? It was really hard because I'm going to say this with an asterisk. It's not that I didn't see any success. I did sign up. I think I made like six grand in booked potential. So that's not cash in hand, but it was like forecasted. So obviously that was a win at that point as well. But the the trade-off was A, that it was so hard to get to that. That's two clients, 6K, right? So 3K each. And that's then over payment plan. And I never saw the full 6K either. That was just forecasted because at the end they wanted refunds, which was which was the thing that annoyed me the most, where it's just like, it wasn't sustainable for me to keep doing this. It wasn't right. easy to keep doing this. It felt so hard. And they wanted refunds in the end. And I'm like. Oh, the bitter. Well, I would have been bitter. Like there are oh, moments when people want a $10 refund. I'm like, do you not read? <laughs> <laughs> like, do you know how much work I'm putting into this? Right, right. That must have been such a huge, I guess, lesson in itself. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was. I was deep in victim mode at that point. I was just like, you, I don't know if you had the same thing, but I certainly had. When I heard about human design for the first time, I was using human design almost as an excuse. I'm just like, well, now I know I'm a projector. I am not meant to start conversations with other people. So clearly I can't do lead generation. Okay. Right? I am not meant to go out and say things to people. Oh, I need to be invited. And so then I sit at home doing things, working on my website, writing a blog, thinking, why is no one coming to me? And then just feeding that bitterness because mm -hmm. I'm not recognizing myself mm -hmm. or being recognized. And so I'm just like, woe is me. Yeah. Oh, yes, I can feel that. And I know so many people who come into human design they read about themselves or parts of themselves reflected. And then we feed into whatever stories we already had of ourselves. I'm so grateful I did so much mindset work, but I can, if I had learned human design five, six years ago before all the healing I've done, I would definitely be there because that's how I was my approach with health coaching, with yeah. yoga, with even naturopath. I was like, I'm going to do things perfectly. So my life will be good. Like it was very much like things are not working because of my fault. Mm. Yeah. And that's, and that's exactly it. And I think I needed it. I, I wasn't actually, so my mindset strength came along the way as I was deconditioning. I didn't start off with mindset because I was like a year in, came fresh out of IT sales, was doing my own business thing. You know, then I was doing this mentorship thing. That was the first time I sort of heard around like self-care and worthiness and all of these things. And that was still new. And, you know, it's like, it's almost like this ignorant bit when you very first hear it. It's good because you need to go through it. But also there's this part of like, oh, there's this gimmick that I'm learning. There's this whole popono that I'm learning. Yeah. And, but you don't really get, like you do it, but you don't really do it. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and so I was doing it. I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. Now go and give me the system. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like I've done, I've done the forgiveness. I've said my forgiveness, but I wasn't feeling it. But yeah. I was just like, well, I'm doing the thing. Why is that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's such a part of the process. And like, I don't want to dismiss this because like, I think that's when we're cracked open. <laughs> Because we all to have to go, yeah, yeah, to get a bit, to go deeper in. We have to intellectualize it. That's how we've been taught. And then it's, the lessons are painful. Sometimes, you know, the challenges come and it's just part of like, oh, this is what embody. We can't think our way into embodying. I try. I try to think my way into alignment. I tried so hard. And it wasn't until I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to do nothing. <laughs> yeah fine I mean it's like nothing's nothing's working so I may as well just do nothing and just rest for a moment yeah 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 and how was the process of kind of reorienting to yourself as you yeah like the surrender part almost painful <laughs> no I'm joking it's not as bad anymore it was bad when I was resisting it a lot so when I was when I was trusting more in which again, when I started with human design, I didn't realize that it's a tool to start trusting yourself. Um, and because I was still so heavily conditioned, I was just like, well, clearly I must only trust in this tool and whatever the, strict, the strictures say, right? So Ra said this and Ra said that. And it's just like, and now that I look at it sometimes, like, don't get me wrong, I love the teachings of Ra, but sometimes some of the things that he said about projectors, I'm like, you you were a bit bitter about us projectors and a bit angry, weren't you? Like... <laughs> Let's be honest. Like <laughs> you didn't quite get us, did you? Right, right. And so, 
I was taking these lessons and I was just learning all of these things. And because I was subscribed to my fears and because I didn't really understand, okay, well, how do I take responsibility? Because it's not something that I grew up with, personal responsibility, right? My parents, um, like we, I come from like a very low earning family and my, I don't know how familiar you are with Germany, but before the war came down, my family came from the Eastern side, which was ruled by the Soviet Union, like communism, they didn't have anything. Mm. And so they, like we grew up after, like I, the war came down three months after I was born. And so I basically grew up still with their mindset of, okay, well, how can we get our children to have the most amount of money? They don't have to like how they earn money. They just have to make money because we didn't have anything. Yeah, yeah. And so the way that I grew up and that my brother grew up was very much like, well, the system, the state, the man, right? And they say, and they say, and the can't piss off the neighbors and you can't do this. And so there was never any personal responsibility. And so I didn't know how to be like, why am I feeling this way? Why am I bitter? Why am I, why do I think I have no control right now? And why am I giving so much control to a system, to another person, to a strategy? Why am I looking outside of myself for the answers? I love that. I was like, oh, I just, absorbing it all because when you're raised in an environment and people don't talk about the environment and our conditioning as more as much I feel like maybe they're starting to more but I feel like so much of our past Mm -hmm. of how we grew up our ancestry that is such a huge component yes we have our charts yes we have a blueprint or an idea of how the energies move but how we've used that energy growing up oh the untangling of that can be fun, <laughs> messy. <laughs> it is. I, I don't know. Do you sometimes have the same, like as you're talking, I always know when I'm deeply connecting, it sounds it sounds so fake. I, I really don't mean it to be fake, but I know when I'm connecting with someone on a really energy, I get like goosebumps. And like whenever we talk, I get goosebumps and I'm like, this is so good. <laughs> Likewise, I I mean, I'm like, it's always TMI. It's like, I get so sweaty when I'm connecting to someone. I'm like, I'm, I can't explain it. I just, that's why I have to wear something light in a session. It's just like energy is moving. I'm feeling yeah. it. Something's happening. I'm just very happy to see you. <laughs> likewise likewise I'm just digging this conversation (laughs) same (laughs) um yeah tell me more about you share a little bit about the root pressure having to be busy all the time and then I'm sure that also show up in your business and how you operate how you run it how has the process been since you've noticed that and how the deconditioning or the stepping back has looked like So I have my solar plexus and my, I'm technically an energy projector, as you can see. And with the emotional and the root pressure, but no connection to the throat, what I've noticed is is that it's very easy for me to be busy for no reason. But I don't get tired of it immediately. And I think that's the danger, Mm. Um, like the danger of this like root pressure of like when I, one of the best examples that I have is my partner is a generator, a spleen, sorry, a sacral generator. He's just got the spleen and the sacral. That's it. And yeah, yeah. (laughs) You have more energy than him in a way. I have, in a way I have more energy, but he has more consistent energy than me. So the best way that I can describe it is that as a one three and I'm a five one, like in, in bed and morning, he needs to take his time in the morning and he needs to like chill and he can stay in bed for the longest time. Like the moment I am up, I need to like, I cannot stay in bed. That's the best I can describe it. And I'm like, that's, that's what I like. Every time I speak to people with a defined root, that's kind of what we share. I'm just like, or sometimes I sit on the sofa and all of a sudden I get this urge of like, right, I need to clean now. (laughs) Right, because your pressure is building up and telling you go uh-huh. versus us undefined. We're like amplify. Should we go? Should we not? So I I have had days where I go up and running and I can do it for a few days, but I just feel so exhausted because I felt like my root pressure hasn't built up. I just did it. So I've been starting for the past few weeks. I'm just gonna start my day reading in bed. I'm not gonna feel guilty. I'm gonna read random articles. I'm gonna read self development of one fantasy books, and I, I'm gonna start my day. And then I notice when the energy saps, I'm like. And I can go for like two, three, four, five hours. And then I'm like, okay, 
But allowing myself that space has really been healing for my root pressure as opposed to be like run all the time. But some days I do wake up like I have so many things to do. I need to get rid of the pressure. I need to start now. Like I feel it. I don't know if your boyfriend also feels. Oh, he does. Oh, he does. He does. So uh, he's not so much into human design, but it's really nice for me to sort of see it because I'm like, I need to know your chart. (laughs) I need to look at these things because I know where I can sort of trigger him and where he can trigger me. And it's like, for me, it's not even, I'm not bothered by stress. I'm not someone who gets stressed. Mm -hmm. Like even with the day to day, when your question was like, okay, well, how do you handle that with the root pressure? In in all honesty, I can keep going. My problem is I don't know when to stop. Mm -hmm. And so there comes this time when I'm working and I'm working and I'm working and I'm like, like it's just gone the tank is gone and then it's so easy for me to from a condition state to then go it's just like right, I just need to finish this one thing but I then have to be like nope go and like actually go outside and go have some fresh air do something later because I'll probably get another burst of energy at like 10 p.m at night that I need to get rid of and then I can write that email or I can do the thing but I need to trust that when the energy is gone, like I need to let it go. Have you find that you give yourself the space to rest and do nothing? Does that make you more anxious if you haven't used that energy? Um, More mentally than anything. But that's because I'm like completely open in my head. So I'm overthink, overthink heaven here. Um, So I'm like, oh, but am I like... I'm just thinking it's not so much an anxiety piece from like a body perspective. It's literally, it's my thoughts. Mm. I'm like, but what if I don't get inspired? I'm like the doubt. Right. It's almost like because you don't move your physical body, then the energy amplifies whatever's Mm -hmm. in your mind and head. And Mm -hmm. it just spins when you're moving. It's like, okay, at least there's a way to pour that energy out. Yep. Yeah. And so my thoughts then take over. So I like, I'm not someone who gets stressed. I can rest, but when I rest, my mind's very busy. So I need to do a lot of work to like journal and brain vomit on fa- on paper. Yeah. If I, if I don't get my thoughts out, oh God, fire and brimstone in my headspace. <laughs> oh yeah. Especially when there's in the transits, I notice the mental definition because I also have like completely open head and Ajna and it's just busy as I'm like buzzing. And sometimes I can journal. Sometimes there's no journaling. Other times I just watch something to help me process the busyness. Yeah. It's almost, it, it does almost help. And I think like fantasy reading, you probably feel the same, but for me, fantasy reading, sometimes I can read something. And I'm like, oh, there's a spark of inspiration, like completely yes. unrelated to what I'm doing. Yes. And I'm like, oh, I can use this in my business. Oh, this is an email I can write. Oh, this is something. Uh, and that feels super good. And then everything's moving again when I allow myself to do that. But I have to be so conscious of doing that. It's so easy for me to just be like, one more email, one more this, one more this until I'm empty. Yeah. And then wonder why I can't think or feel. <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially when you enjoy what you do. I think that's the part like we we hear about. You get energized by what you do. Yes. But we are also in human physical yeah. bodies that need rest and sleep and uh-huh. water. <laughs> it's so easy for me to override it. So I've oh really had to have practices to be like, snap out of it. Or here's a tune or change environment yeah. for me. It's just even walk out of the room. Because sometimes I, I don't feel like I'm in the mood. And you do have the 39.55. Yeah. And sometimes <laughs> like, I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the mood. But it's like your mood sometimes can be influenced. You don't get to change it. But Sometimes it just needs a sample of everything. Have you find find that in you? I have. Sometimes it's able to do it more often than not. Like I, w- when I first heard about like the energetic waves and the different waves that everyone has, I'm just like, I like at the very first time I was just like, oh, energetic wave. Okay, well, I I thought it's like the sinus curve, and I'm like. I don't really resonate with that because it's not really like I have, like, I can go from zero to a hundred up or down in a millisecond, yeah. right? I can sit on the sofa and suddenly I can have this burst of melancholy, like mm-hmm. utter dread. And I'm like, where's this coming from? Literally had that on Sunday. And I'm like, I'm the worst in the world and everything. So, and I'm like, what? And then like, I don't know, a day later, I can go the complete opposite, but I'm usually sort of hovering in the middle. And so I can influence it 
to some degree, but not a lot. Because most of the time, and I've, I've noted, like when I when I read that mine is like usually stable and then I have spikes, I'm like, that makes so much sense. Right. right. <laughs> and it's impulsive, like literally impulsive. The energy is like, zang, surprise. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is. And it can be, it, it's very funny. Like my parents would, would say this. They're just like, God, Adina, as a child, you were so moody. And I never understood it. I just thought that I was like this, you know, typical millennial kid, like Avril Lavigne and fucking, you know, emo music, had my hair all the side, my punk rock. Watching the rain bell. pour down oh, the yeah. window. <laughs> Absolutely. Sitting by the window, hoping that my hoping that my school crush would suddenly appear at the bottom. Be like, <laughs> she was, he was a skater boy. Like, you know, like, oh my God, I was pathetic. But, you know, I'm enjoying these things. Um but it's like my parents were like, oh, my God, you were so moody. But had I known this at the time, I'm like, well, if I'd allow myself to just be moody, because I was also I'm hugely into music. I wrote some of my best music when I was moody. Oh, wait, do you do you share your music? Is that something that you I, I haven't done in the longest time? So I'm actually a trained singer but I haven't <gasps> sung professionally in a long time. And I taught myself guitar and I was learning the piano. You and keyboard. self taught guitar? Come on. Like <laughs> five ones. Ones are like, so like, oh, I just did this. I just did that. I'm like, do you know how I can't even read music? I can't even imagine. <laughs> You're like, you self taught guitar. <laughs> well, it was, yeah. I mean, now that you mentioned it, I was just like, oh yeah, well, I guess I have to because my, my dad played guitar. And I was just like, that, that's really cool. I want to do the same thing. So he got me like a spare acoustic guitar, gave me this book. He was just like, this is the book that I learned. I'll show you how to read the read the uh, strings. Uh -huh. I'll show you how to read the book. Here's the first uh, chord. Uh, off you go. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I guess I'm doing that. <laughs> so trust in you too. I love that. <laughs> I mean, I had a lot more confidence back then. I don't know if I could still do the same, but yeah, I would love to do a little bit more music. But I remember like in that, in that sadness, oh my God, I was so bloody inspired. Oh, yes. That's the gifts of the individual circuitry, the creativity when we allow ourselves to be in it, when we support ourselves. And the acoustics of the 3955, of course, music was one of your biggest way to, I guess, move and process this energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was big for me, like big, that music part. Something that I definitely want to incorporate again. I'm currently on the hunt for like a secondhand guitar because I'm like, oh, you know what? It would be really nice. So I'm just waiting for that to sort of enter into my orbit. Yeah, so yeah. I want to play again. I've made some space up in my in my office space upstairs so that I can have music. I want to get myself like a little e-piano again because I just, I need it. Yeah, <laughs> I need yeah. the acoustics. Oh, yes, please. And I mean, like whenever <laughs> you, you want to share it with the world, if you want to put it in your podcast intro, please do. Because I feel like when we hear something that somebody has created, it it's just so powerful when it comes from someone we know and we admire. It's like, oh, I love it. I, you can just play one, two. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh man. Yeah, I. it's so funny. And I and again, had I known human design as a child, it would have been different because I I, I mean, I still sing in the shower. I still sing for myself. I still sometimes like record things on here on Audacity, but I don't publicize it because like, what does a fifth line do? Is it good enough? Oh, <laughs> what does yeah. a first line do? Oh, we're so insecure. <laughs> They're like, there's so many things I can learn. And then the projections, tell me about learning about your profile. Where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've finished yet. Yeah. It was... It was affirming to hear about the projections for the first time, but it was also hella confusing because I still haven't quite sussed out. So I think like every profile has such immense power. And I think the biggest struggle for someone like me with a fifth line, for instance, is like this, we need to almost be extra self-confident. Mm to like a higher degree and, I, and and this isn't a pissing contest by the way right but like where second lines have this like innate talent and they need to understand where that innate talent is it's just like because we almost need to be like these projections don't mean anything about me but it's mm. so hard with the insecurity of the first line it's like but don't they mean anything about me what if I don't know enough what if my foundation is shaky and it's like you constantly have this tug of war as like again every profile has their like shadow side but for me I still haven't mastered it all the time I still sometimes succumb to this thing of like am I disappointing them right now 
like, am I saying the right thing? Am I like, am I looking the right way? And it's like, it's, it, it, it's overwhelming. And sometimes in the moment you can't really feel it, but I've definitely become better. And I think it'll always be something to learn, especially, um, I don't know how many times I have to 38, 39 in the 51 shock fight and provocation to fight, yeah. but like, it's a lot. <laughs> Plus the fifth line, you're like, people are, you know, they're going to make so many assumptions. Even when you just show up without saying anything, you also have the 12, you walk into a room, even your silence. <laughs> so here, here's a story for you. And this is something that I haven't, like, it, it triggers me, but I'm learning to live with it. And I, and I don't know if you feel this as well, if you have like fifth lines or, or like, I know you have also 38s, 30, oops, uh, 39s and 51s in your chart. But so the thing that I notice a lot, and this is like, again, affirmation that human design is just so real. The same people that are in my orbit that, for instance, my peers share with me right so we've learned to know the same people and we follow each other on social media and we all get along eventually the same people will unfollow me and not talk to me but not to the same people that they have known with with me at the same time and I'm like what did I do mm -hmm. what did I do that suddenly you just cut me off but you're still okay speaking to my friend who you met at the same time mm -hmm. and um Eventually, I started noticing it's like that fifth line of the provocation and the fight and the shock. It's just because people like either I'm for them or I'm not almost yeah. to like a super polarizing degree. And that was a really hard lesson to learn because, again, do I take it personally? Mm -hmm. Is like is the heretic going to just try and play savior for those people, too? And whenever I did, I'm disappointing them. And that's like... <laughs> Oh my gosh. Honestly, I have so much admiration for the fifth lines because to deal with those projections, like we all deal with projections, like we all project to each other, but I think the fifth line are so sensitive, like they can pick up those projections right away. And, you know, which sometimes can lead to paranoia for good reason, right? Because you can feel when somebody's perception of you changes or somebody's energy goes from like admiring, mm -hmm. adoring you to like, and I can't even imagine how overwhelming, like my husband's a three, five and I watch him like he's not into human design. And I watch him like you poor thing, because at the beginning of our relationship, he used to like talk about I, what are people thinking? And I, for sakes, like before knowing human design, I'm like, who cares what people think about you? <laughs> who cares? It doesn't matter what you think of us. It's none of your business what people think, because I am not affected yeah, by those yeah. projections to the same degree. And when I learn about it, my heart broke. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> of course he noticed. Of course he cares because he does feel them and in a way those projections also allow you to really share your truth like at the right moment it can be so powerful when you're like yes let me step into it but if you're not aware of it it can almost feel like hot and cold do he, people love me oh they hate me <laughs> what the hell uh-huh exactly exactly that and I think that's what like at least for me so when you say what have you learned about your profile I'm just like I'm still reconciling that um I'm waiting for the day when I can really embody the idea of like, there's also a part of me that's just like, but do I want to, I want to help everyone. Right. Like, again, it's just like from that conditioned state. Um, but when I get to the point of just like, look, I know who I am. I know exactly what it is that I'm good at, what I can help with. Um, I'm not quite there yet because there's still a part of me that's just like, but I want to find solutions for all of you. I can do a little bit of everything. That's fine. You need help. I'll help you. Yeah. I, I honestly think like it comes from such a pure loving place. Like, because you, you see the things that can be improved. You see it. You're like, why not? If I do it, everybody will be happy. If I yeah, do yeah. it, if I commit to it, I'll solve the problems. And there's yeah. really this almost innocence and in just wanting to be like, <laughs> they don't want to be a heretic, but they're like, I, I can see it. I can fix it. But it's also so easy to overextend. And as a 5-1, you're a left angle. So much of what you do is with the people, for the people, yep. as you learn about yourself. So that I can't imagine the tension. Plus, you're a split definition. You're like, I want to be with people. And also like, <gasps> leave me alone. Yeah, leave me alone. Like, do they see me? Is that really who I am? And like, just having the, I guess, the awareness of like healing yourself, because we all have a rejection wound. Yeah. But, you know, in the case of the fifth line, that rejection wound can feel so deep. It can, yeah, it 
it's connected to so many things and really I guess I don't know if you do this more consciously like how has the healing been even though you shared a little bit even in relationships like noticing okay this is what I bring this is the effects but it's not personal the healing has been very gradual and I think as a projector as well you know that we're very bad at seeing things for ourselves <laughs> <laughs> and so it's almost ironic the degree of healing that I do when I have conversations like this through other people or when I'm I'm healing more when I'm helping my clients because it's exactly what I need to hear as well it is ironic. Like I can sit at home. I, I shared a reel not long ago where I was just like, the, you know, when I, when I do the same work that I tell my clients to do. And there was like this Taylor Swift is just like, what actually goes on is my head. Why can we eat lettuce, but not grass? <laughs> that kind of thing. It's like, <laughs> it's like immediately like blanking. I'm like, why can't I do this for myself? It's just like, if, if I, I found for me personally, you know, maybe that's something that I still need to work on. I heal much more when I do it through people. It also takes the pressure away. I love that. Like so much has of my healing has happened when I wasn't, you know, trying or pursuing. It's just been mm. in conversations, in connection and being like, oh yeah, I want to be with the people that nourish me right now at this stage. Like as a fourth line, I've also learned to be like, there are sometimes like people I don't want to connect to. I connect because it came from a nice place. The friendliness of the fourth line sometimes pulls in people and they just want to overshare. I'm like, you know nothing about me. <laughs> like You just dump and you feel good and you leave. And I had to like kind of work around that bitterness for a while because I'm like, why does everybody want to talk to me? But yet they don't ask about me. They just want to talk at me and they feel good and then they leave. <laughs> oh my God. I've had this. Do you have this that I always feel that fourth and fifth lines like we're always meant to meet right there was I don't know where where I saw this once it might have been Erin Claire Jones might have been someone else but it's just behind every fourth line is a fifth line that took them under their wing and I have so many fourth line friends and so many people in the fourth line not that I'm taking you under my wing but it's always like a fifth line sees a fourth line and a fourth line always a first affirms the fifth line and I'm like it's this beautiful like that's what I felt when you like when you message me I'm like hi who are you <laughs> nice to meet you <laughs> and so when you say that it's like that friendliness I think it's so how do you how do you experience that though because like both of us need people but it's yeah. almost like you need the right people and a very like like you it's right or die and for me it's like anyone will do isn't <laughs> <laughs> right, right yeah oh gosh like for me like the fourth line the people are my foundation mm. but also showing up without the pressure of like you got to be my foundation because that <laughs> does not work <laughs> but it's there is a friendliness in me it's just who I am like I will go and I'll say hi to the taxi driver if it feels good for me or like I'll smile I won't be overly open depending on my energetic capacity that day like random side story I just came back from a tooth removal a few weeks ago and the uber driver bless his heart he was so chatty and I told him at the beginning I just have a tooth removal I can't really see he was just chatting and chatting I'm like it's okay it's like you know I can tell that he was happy he wanted to talk to someone but I encounter so many of these something about my aura that people just want to come and talk to me sometimes I sit at a cafe and I'm like I have to have a mean face. Otherwise, somebody's going to, nine out of 10, somebody will want to sit because either they need a spot or they just want to blab. I don't know why. <laughs> so so fun because it's the opposite for me. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, please. Like, I love hearing the, about that. Yeah, I love that. You have this like sense of like, don't, don't come to me. For me, it's like people are like, let's talk to her. And I just have to learn about my energetic boundaries. Sometimes I can make like friendship out of nothing. Like, oh, we have a nice connection. We're vibing when I do open up. When I don't have the capacity, I have to be very careful. I'm like, okay, setting the boundaries, setting the boundaries, but also admitting to myself just because you had a nice connection once, you don't have to be friends forever. Because I do have the friendliness fatigue, feeling so guilty of like, am I using people? Like, this was a nice conversation, but I don't think we need to ever meet again <laughs> for me that's enough like we don't ever <laughs> that was good like let's just keep it at, that's how I am and a lot of my friendships are 
I don't know for lack of a better expression, like low maintenance. Like I believe in the connection we have. We can talk once a year, once every few years. I love you. We don't need to be in each other's faces. Are you single definition? Single, yes, single definition. Yeah, you can hear that, that right? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, because mm. <laughs> I'm like every every single definition. My partner's the same. It's just like, what do you mean? It's been six months. It doesn't feel that way. And I'm like, you haven't spoken to me in six months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, right. Whereas whereas people like me with like our splits, we're just like, right, go away, come back. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> go away, come back. And especially for a fifth line, you want the freedom to go away without mm-hmm. guilt. And then come back. You're like, still love me? Cool. <laughs> but it's like, like for instance, where you have this thing where everyone just wants to talk to you, right? Where you want your right people. Me as a fifth line, what I'm experiencing then is I go to a coffee shop and I'm like, someone please talk to me. <laughs> because they don't because usually they project they're just like a dino like that's the thing that I get a lot and I think it's the shock the provocation and like the fight they're always like their first impression is always just like you're really intimidating right because the 39 it is your personality son Mm -hmm. that's like the first thing that people always say you're really intimidating you have like resting bitch face you're not very approachable and I'm like I'm so friendly. <laughs> yeah, you are so friendly. That's what we got. Along. I don't know. When you reached out, I was just like, hey, she cool. She open. <laughs> she goofy like me. Yeah. And so like just hearing it, it's interesting to hear that like side because you have my personality side as your design. So you will yeah. feel that on on the some... body side. Yeah. Sometimes I can provoke people when I don't try to. Like I can see that they're like, oh, something. They're not comfortable around me. I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not, it's not as loud because maybe that is my sixth line. So it's not, it's more gentle. But since you have that as your person, and then you also have the shock. Mm-hmm. I don't have the gate of shock. I have uh, my, you know, it's other. I think I have the fighter. So yep. some, unless some something triggers me, I won't, you know, be in your face fighting. I'm more like run away. But yeah, like having that, like you're, 51 and the 57 tell me tell me more (laughs) oh my god so yeah so the 51 I think is big it's this like before I even knew I say I say things that are shocking even though I haven't got like a direct connection to the throat but I have noticed um that I can sometimes just express myself in shocking ways or do things that are shocking, even if I don't intend to. Mm-hmm. There's nothing I can do about it. Sometimes intend I intend to do it and I like to shock on purpose, sometimes to piss off and sometimes to just rattle the cage a little bit. Oh, that's you know? a pair with your 39 who's like, let me poke. But it also in a in divine ego. So maybe that's why the, you know, you don't always want to sap people sometimes it comes <laughs> sometimes sometimes it just comes and when when I'm aware of it it's okay but I know that it can really catch me I've got because it's inconsistent the shock um when I for instance enter a room like networking meetings are a really good example for this it's like there's a 50 percent chance that I either trigger someone or they're okay with me and I don't know what it's going to be at that moment <laughs> and Again, if I'm not if I'm not like bulletproof, and I really have to be bulletproof. It sounds extreme, but when I then don't take care of like, okay, well, I'm sure in who I am. So for the longest time, I thought I'm like I can't have a defined G center. That can't be true because I don't know who I am. Mm-hmm. But that's because I have this paranoia. That's because I have this shock, and I'm like, is like, am I a shocking person? So then I question myself, and then I'm like, then I go into my head. And so it's really interesting when I then look at it. And so I go into a networking meeting, for instance, and the thing that I do, I have I have a thing that I do. So they take us in breakout rooms, for instance, if it's online, and to sort of like peep out, mm-hmm. uh, like feel out if someone is, if they're my people or not. When they ask questions like, uh, what will your TED talk be? It's like a very like general question. It's just like, if you had a TED talk, what would your TED talk be? Most of the time, I ain't got a fucking clue what my TED talk would be, but I always have two lines that that I have. I have one that's PC and one that's like out there. <laughs> and whenever I am asked, and I'm just like, okay, well, do you want me to tell you the one that would likely be accepted or the one that I would like to speak on? And people are like, what would you like to speak on? And then I usually say the shocking thing. Can you share and then I sort of, yeah, yeah. Usually I say things like, you know, how to not be a dick as a manager or how to, how to not be a douchebag when you're selling, right? Like I purposely use language like this to sort of feel out, are these my people or not? Yeah. 
And so I can usually see the people who laugh. I'm like, there you go. And then I almost latch onto them. Yeah. And everyone else who hasn't laughed at that, they you they they don't like me. They're usually the ones that are just like, you're so intimidating or something. Like I'm still friendly. I'm yeah. not an ass when I say these things, but they're just like, mm, look at her, too big for her britches. And it's just like yeah gosh that must be so I mean I only have a little bit of the like I have the 39 to 38 I can tell when somebody's like uncomfortable and it as a kid I would be like I don't understand like this person this popular person is like happy nice to everyone but with me who are you like are you Uh like I don't understand and it's hard like is it me like well I know who I am but like What's your problem? <laughs> right? Exactly that. But just like on a constant basis. And so I think it's just really important, at least for me or anyone else who sort of shares a similar design, it's like really this like, oh, you really need to understand everyone gets to do their thing. So do you. You're not wrong for being a certain way. But boy, it's hard, especially when you grew up in like this whole environment of like small village with my parents. Don't piss off the neighbors. What will the neighbors think? What will uh, my mom's a five one projector as well? Oh, wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Oh. My dad's a mansion and my brother is a generator. The projections on each other. <laughs> on oh, the projections you? between my mom and myself were crazy and she's defined in her head so she's a mental projector uh, oh and then she <laughs> amplified everything that you were basically uh-huh. mm-hmm. <laughs> it was carnage <laughs> this is why i like to until i found human design i didn't realize why i always said that me and my family work better apart now i know why you triggered each other oh we just- did just like walking in a room. Oh, we Fires. <laughs> oh, you should have seen. Sometimes I come down the stairs into the room and she's like, God damn it, what have you done? And I'm like, why have I done? You left the milk out. And I'm like, and that's a big deal. Why? How dare you talk to me like this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then oh obviously God. me as a teenager would be like, fine, you want to go there? Like, I will go there. I can spill vitriol. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, here it is. I'll open the fucking bottle. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's so fascinating, right? When we look at our design and our childhood and the ways we grew up and the ways we reacted that way. It's like, oh, it makes sense. (laughs) It all makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes total sense. Oh my gosh. I love, love hearing about that. Tell me a little bit about your identity center. When I first read about it, when I talk to people, they're like, you know, it's the center of direction, knowing who I am. And I feel like it's more subtle like it's this guiding post that is not like you're going there because that's the right place for you it's more like uh, this is right for you or like this is not right now I said earlier that I thought that I had an undefined G center yeah. for the longest time I really don't because when I speak to people I'm like yeah I know I don't feel like I need someone to complete me for this sense of purpose or whatever but what I struggle with is what is my purpose for the longest time because like who am I in this world and I think again with my with my particular incarnation cross I'm here to be individual so how does someone who's here to be individual meant to know what they're here for right so it's an oxymoron just by definition yeah and um and so for me the g-center is exactly like you said it's very subtle like when I'm emotionally high in my wave I know exactly who I am, but it's almost depending on where I am in my emotional wave, I can lose who I am. So when I'm in melancholy, I'm like, what is the world? Am I meant to be? Am I meant to be who I am? So like as a teenager, I would be like, maybe it'd be better if I was, you know, not, not, not born or if I was born a cat or if I was like something else entirely, like something. I had like this identity of wanting to be even different people. I'm like, if I was, if I was my brother, I'd be so much. And I'm like, and then the moment I feel better, I'm like, no, being me is amazing. (laughs) Oh, I love you pairing that with the influence of your wait because like our energies are never by itself and 
again, like I can hear the 38, the search for purpose. Like it is your earth. Yeah. <laughs> it is oh, what, it is. It, you know, it grounds you to think about purpose. But at the same time, what is purpose? How do we find purpose? Like, what do we fight for? And it's okay that that kind of fluctuates. <laughs> it doesn't change who we are, but it also, it's like, we're human. Like as much as we have consistent energies, we don't, we're not robots. <laughs> And I, yeah, and I think that's it. And and that is my purpose to show other people what they're like, that it doesn't have to be so linear. Like that's what I've I've noticed, at least especially in my business, that I'm not here to do like a tangible thing. Right. Yeah, sure. I teach people sales and I teach people how to scale, but really what I'm really teaching them, but that's not really marketable, was like, who are you within that? What's your why? What drives you? What's the motivation behind this? Because so many people then shackle themselves to the business and they're like, oh, I have to offer what everyone else is offering. And I'm like, mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm like, let's find you within that. And so, you know, obviously I'm marketing the sales and scaling, but, but it's so much more than that. It's like the sense of direction. And I think I even, I think my most defined center is the root and, and the throat center. So I'm really like here to sort of express that drive, that ambition and the communication bit of it. And so, yeah, it's, it, it's so many fold the the sense of purpose and showing that and expressing that myself and constantly reevaluating and constantly strengthening my foundation around that and it's a wild ride yeah yeah you're like oh that's life that's what i do every day <laughs> no <It> biggie is. <laughs> it's like what every second line says it was just like but i thought everyone does that I know it's like our gift to children. They're just like, I thought, I thought you're just good at that. No, mm -mm. you're like, there is some strengthening. There is some dedication and vulnerability involved and a lot of projections to kind of like dodge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's so fun. How do you, how do you, are you defined in your G center? I don't remember. Uh, I have a spleen and ego. Those are my only definition. But it's funny when I've read about the identity center, I felt defined. I felt like I, mm -hmm. I've known who I am, even though I am a chameleon with people, I can pick up like their accents or mannerisms. Like if I'm in someone's energy long enough, I can like, I don't try to, but sometimes it just comes out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I say a similar word and them. I repeat their accent, not to mock them. You know, I know I'm chameleon like that, but I think it might be my ego. Like I have a really strong sense of self or stubbornness it might be also stubbornness that I'm just like everybody is making a story about me because I do have the hanging 10 and I think that's right. in the fifth line so a lot of people are making assumptions growing up my family used to think like oh she is that way or people take advantage of her and all that but I'm like I'm just picking my fights like you're making all those assumptions about me but I don't have the energy to fight you nor are you important enough for me to fight you <laughs> so it's been but then I also understand the not knowing where I'm going or like all the roles that I've tried, like yoga instructor or health coach, all the things that I've tried and played with don't define me. I don't know if that explained anything. My mind went blank after I went there. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. It's, like, it's so cool to see because like, I always say that the centers are like the same coin and we're just defined and undefined. It's just the same coin, just different sides. Yeah, and so yeah. a lot of what you've just said resonated with me. Like I can pick up someone's accent without wanting to, but I am defined in my G center. Yeah, yeah. But I think for me, it's this like in the moment thing, right? So I've got the the 10, 20, I've got the yes. like 57, yes. I've got the 57, 10 right to the throat. I'm just like in the moment. And sometimes I think that can sort of be this like, it it sounds it sounds really um I always discredit myself when I say that and I don't mean to. It's one thing that I really need to learn. I couldn't teach how I coach because I don't know what comes out of my mouth until I say it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I always discredit myself by saying like and also have to like stop being paranoid around it. I'm just like, does that mean I'm a fraud? And so I think like the thing with the accent and whatever. But comes also from that. It's just like it's in the moment. Like I don't yes. know. I don't know what wisdom spews out of my mouth until I get to say the thing. Right, right. It's also like with your 10, right? It's about how you behave with who you are. What is the safest thing for you? What is the most authentic in the moment? 
Mm -hmm. It's always an in the moment. And so when you were saying these things, I'm like, they resonate with me too, but just on like the other side of the coin. I love that. I love that. That's why I have so much difficulty when people are like, define, undefined, this is the way. But I'm like, I see it working for both. I really do. Mm -hmm. And it's more about our relationship with it and understanding like, oh, yeah, like sometimes I have the emotional solar plexus defined and it's going to influence my decisions. I'm going to feel moody. I'm going to go through the highs and lows. But I'm like, at the end of the day, though, I am going to have this extra filter that's operating, running my my system right now. But then if I do jump on decisions out of it because I'm like, oh, got to do it. I'm excited. Momentum. Yeah. I know it's not sustainable, but it also doesn't mean like nothing ever works and like life will be terrible. Sometimes results do happen. But also like what is sustainable, what feels right in the long run. I think that's, we can always overextend ourselves. It's normal, but then it's like, okay, how do we come back? I think that's the most important part. How how are you finding, are you finding that easier already? Because your energy projector as well, I think it can be so hard to know when that's the point. Oh, yes. So hard, so hard. Like I felt it and I've, I think I've always be deconditioning <laughs> and learning about ourselves. But I think just learning that with my ego, I can push and deprive mm. myself has been this extra awareness that when I do catch myself exhausted before I would go into the blame game of like, well, why do you do this to yourself? And then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm exhausted right now. Like it's a lot easier to move in and out of those energies without yeah making a story out of them yeah i i do sometimes still tend to make a story but again I, i'm lacking that willpower right i'm like i have the drive and i have the emotion i'm like why can't i move why can't i move it why can't i express it yeah and so it's very easy for me to then and go and be like well maybe i need to prove myself some more. <laughs> how has that been with the combination of the undefined heart with your hanging your only hanging is to shock i know so you can prove through sharp through shock a lot of times <laughs> i can but it's so inconsistent so inconsistent so it's in the in the very, very beginning when clients came to me they a lot of them the ones that weren't intimidated by me were like oh my god I love your energy like I love that you're swearing like a sailor like yesterday (laughs) I had a podcast interview with a girl called Sam and she's just like it's almost like you're a posh potty mouth and I'm like yeah that that describes me quite well I'm like that's great (laughs) (laughs) and that's kind of like that that goes hand in hand and like this I can shock it's just inconsistent and sometimes if I think it's again this mental pressure right Mm -hmm. because completely wide open like I have no gates whatsoever in my headspace there's so much mental pressure and needing to make sense of my thoughts but also there's no beginning middle or end and then how do I organize thoughts that I don't have and are they mine and are they not mine and am I going to be certain about them and also how can like again gate of opinions right (laughs) like I've got the seven right there I'm just like 17 yeah plus the need for foundations how can I share these things but also have a way to back them up (laughs) yeah it's it it, it's a wild ride and so something that I have to do a lot is almost on a daily basis I have to learn something even if I go over the same curriculum over and over again but if I don't do that I notice that I become self-conscious I notice that I stop knowing how to express myself and obviously seeing that I have to create content Uh, for not have to create content but want to because I am here to talk I have definition in my throat so like talking is something that comes natural to me but then it's like well do I just talk for the sake of talking which is very easy for me to do like I can just like I have this I have the sales training that I'm currently promoting and one of the things that I'm teaching among is just like okay well if you have a defined throat like it's easy for you to like just fill silences just stop doing that take it from someone who knows (laughs) oh mine is the complete opposite like for my solo podcast episodes I do them when there's energy but if I were to say like you know you have to do it every week or something I can't I show up and because I don't have nothing to amplify I'm just like, "Mm." like, it's so hard. But when I'm in conversation, yeah, I can talk a lot. But when I'm by myself, I'm like, Like, what do I say? Like, I used to, I remember presentations at school. Like, I could go, like, 10 minutes or I could also be, like, and this is why it happened, like, 10 seconds. Like, sometimes my presentation, like, that's it. (laughs) Even when I was, like, in advertising and sales, I'll be like, yeah, this product is good because it does this for you. Okay. Like, 
done and people what were like what else to say <laughs> yeah what else is to say it's obvious you know it just makes your life easier what else do you want me to say i think because the energy wasn't there for me to amplify or wasn't super passionate or if i was passionate i'm like all over the place <laughs> And for me, it's the opposite. I can just be like, again, no definition in my headspace. So I'm like, where do I start? And once I start, I'm like, fuck, am I saying the right thing? And then I just start talking. And then and 20 minutes later, and I haven't stopped talking. And I haven't so and it's so easy for me to just like waffle. <laughs> like say say things. But like when when I don't speak in the moment, like when I feel when that emotional wave comes and I'm like okay well my authority says it's go but also with a defined I don't always have need to wait for the emotional wave even though that's my authority I also have the spleen so I can go in the moment sometimes yeah, yeah. but if I if I don't have either I can just waffle have and you no noticed? one understands what I'm saying right have yeah. you noticed the difference of those expressions when you're just waffling out of because you have the energy versus everything is like go yeah People don't see me when I just waffle. When I don't listen to my emotional authority or the splenic hit, I get no recognition. And then I'm like, why is no one listening? This shit's good. Right. And then I listen back to it and I'm like, I've said a lot of things, but I haven't actually said a lot of things. Interesting. I love that nuance because that's what it is at the end. Like we can, we can feel energy. Like we can't people smell it like in a poster mm -hmm. and everything like, we can mm -hmm. smell sniff energy we can't pinpoint what it is mm -hmm. but people feel it yeah they do and every time it's like if i'm just speaking to fill silences like if i'm trying to create for the sake of it i yeah. see it literally social social media is literally like my my evidence board for that energetics it's like okay well am i trying to fill silences right yeah. now those posts don't get a lot of engagement every time i do them because it feels right in the moment or because emotionally it was a 80 percent yes because let's face it we never get 100 percent emotional yeah. clarity, oh. right like, like I had to learn that. I'm like, oh, I can't be certain. Oh, um, then I get good engagement. Then I get people like commenting on stuff. I've also noticed that difference. Like when I'm creating out of pressure and should, and because of my will motor, it's like, you can do it. You can make it pretty. <laughs> the impact is less. And I feel kind of like, mm, okay. But when I'm like, oh, this is fun. I'm just moving energy because something wants to come out. The mm -hmm. impact of that, I'm like, Somebody will be like, oh, I love what you did. I'm like, really? Like I wasn't like I wasn't trying. And at the beginning, I was like, why do the thing? Why when I'm trying, it doesn't work? And when I'm not trying, yeah. because I just need to express it, people yeah. gravitate to me more. It's almost like we become more magnetic when we allow our energy to be in harmony. <laughs> oh, who who thought? Who thought? Right? There, there's, a, there's a thought. <laughs> It's almost when we're acting out of alignment and actually just letting energy flow. Things are easier. This is that that's a con. There's a thought there. Right, right. <laughs> How has it been learning about you have an emotional wave, and you're not always going to get 100 percent clarity. And at the same time, we do live in a world that wants instant, instant, instant. How have you kind of find a center to hold space for yourself, but also be like okay, what is the middle ground for me to reach? I think the first thing that I'm going to say to this is I wish more people would know about human design because then they would know that 70% of the world aren't meant to be bloody certain and half the world population aren't meant to be spontaneous. And I'm like, if we all knew that, we could get <laughs> away with the instant gratification. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> like, first of all. Um, and then... I think firstly for me, it's allowing myself that I get to sleep on it. It's really like my, it, it's like, okay, well, can I sleep on it? Can I get back to you tomorrow? And because I'm defined in my spleen, I can be like, I can almost give people an instant answer, but I'm like, look, it might change. Mm -hmm. And I, and that's usually what I say. I'm like, if I'm, if I'm being asked to go somewhere, if I'm being asked like, Hey, can you make me a proposal for this thing? Or can you come on this show or do something? I'm like, okay, well, at this moment, let me say yes. It sounds like something I can do, but let me get back to you tomorrow once I've had a look at my calendar, once I've had a night to sleep on it. And I just give myself a little bit of time to feel into it because there's been so many times when I was in an emotional high and I'm like, and you get a yes, and you get a yes. I just <laughs> outright yeses. <Yeah. laughs> and, uh, and then I'm like, oh, shit. 
what have I done like half an hour later I'm like what have I just agreed to <sighs> that happened recently to me with some charity work I'm like yeah sure I can help you build your team I can help do the team space with you and that was just like I don't know why I said yes in the moment it's just like again high emotional wave I was excited about the person wasn't listening to my spleen at all I'm just like yeah sure let me help you heretic oh and then and then she's like let me speak to to my boss and the next day I'm like God, I hope the boss says no. What did the boss say? Please tell me. <laughs> the boss said no. The boss was just like, no, it's great that you want to offer this person. No. And so I'm like, okay, I don't have to have you guys. Oh, I've actually had situations like this where I I was in like an, a space where I was amplifying like their great ideas, mm. the excitement. I was like, I'll do this. I'll be your designer. I'll do that. And then when I left and closed the call, I'm like, Ugh. But yes. like, why did I volunteer? Why am I overcompensating? And even though I am splitting, I was also amplifying those things. So I think even having the language of like, you are going to amplify all the great ideas, <laughs> all the excitement, all the stress, you're going to amplify everything. <laughs> so sometimes just buying yourself time, there are moments where it's just like, yes, yes, yes. And I can feel it. And I, you know, and there are moments where I say yes, and I feel a little bit of like, like in my body, I'm like, oh no, what did I do? I'm like, it's just like, I was saying yes out of the mental benefits out of like, oh, I love that. And a part of me does want to do it, but I don't have capacity. Yeah. And I think that's what makes it so hard because there's also, and I mean, you have the added thing of like the desire bit with your heart. I don't have that. I just amplified. So I don't know if the person that I spoke to, I don't know their design. So maybe they had a defined heart. So maybe I was amplifying desires, right? Yeah. Amplifying desire for support. But you also have this bit where it's like, maybe tell me if you find it. It's just like, but also mentally, I want to do this thing. I want to say yes. For me, it's more like the fifth line where it's just like, I want to, you know, like, I want to take you somewhere and I save you to like a degree that I'm able to. <laughs> oh, for me, it's the fourth line opportunist mm. like I do see the opportunist that's over committing mm. it's like oh opportunity there you never know it's gonna go there but the opportunist when I don't align it to my spleen and my energetics it's not sustainable I will commit no. to something I'll commit to a project design whatever it is and then eventually I dread it I'm like the opportunist mm -hmm. that I thought was gonna be there we're not there or sometimes it does come and I'm like I don't want that opportunity yeah <laughs> I just yeah, thought it, it was a great idea it. yeah Oh, I love that nuance. We need a third line in here and a sixth line as well. That would be, oh my God, should we do a group thing? We Maybe that's a good idea. We just bring in people and talk because that's, for me, that's like where I learned the most, like those group environments. Just like, let's chat. Tell me how you feel this. Tell me how you feel the other thing. Maybe something's coming. <laughs> we'll sleep on it. We're just going to let that, we'll, 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 we'll marinate on it. Yeah, we'll marinate on it. But so far it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> looks like I'm gonna have to re reach out to another spontaneous person that happens to have our design wouldn't that be fun if someone has our our chart again like we share half a chart and then someone yes. else shares half a chart I mean Putting you're the there. first person that I've met that has my my design almost identical I think that I think almost identical I think there's only yeah. one gate that's different right I think so let me pull it up and I'll share it like in the comments and the links for anybody who's you know going mm -hmm. through the blog YouTube wherever I'll figure out how to share that but yeah almost identical side by side like our moons are different but mm, yeah I could see that it moves fast because the moon moves so fast but so many of the gates like the north nodes are very similar the nodes are similar Mercury. Well, that's how I found you when I was researching my notes. Cause I'm like, ah, because I'm not quite in my North Node yet. I'm 34. I'm going to be 35. So I'm slowly moving into it. Oh, yeah. And that's how I found you when I was researching my notes. Uh, yeah, everything else is the same. And except for the my mind is blanking. Your personality. We, you're switched, in the fifth we're line. switched in the yeah. Yeah, the earth and mine, by the time my design came, it was already six line. But yeah. it's still like the same signs. We just like, whoa, this is fascinating, Crazy. fascinating, fascinating, and so much fun. Maybe that's why I have fun with you. I'm like a part of me recognizes you, a <laughs> kindred spirit. Well, that's the same about like I, I read your blog and I'm like, yeah. And then I, I, because because you have said, oh well, you know, I've got the 39 or the 38, one of the gates that you're in there. And I'm like, 
oh well she has it in her design too and in her like earth or whatever I'm like I must speak to her (laughs) I love that. I love that, which I really appreciate you for reaching out. I think it's a fourth line, you know, sometimes we're like, I want to be friends with everybody. And also like, I want to be friends with nobody. Like sometimes I get messages. I'm like, I don't know you, you know, I can't control the reaction. Like my body is like, but you know, you message and that day I open, I'm like, oh, she seems nice. And I even said to you in the message, I even said to you in the message, I'm like, I doubt you're going to read it because it's going to be in your mess. I had, I was just like, she's not going to read it, but I'm just going to put it out there. Universe be doing its thing. And it did, right? Track, the, 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 the fracture was there. Yeah, yeah. Which also brings to an interesting concept of projectors and waiting for the invitation. Because I feel like it's so nuanced. It's not specifically as in like, because I didn't say like people contact me or, you know, and then like, it also, it almost feels like this bad thing you're doing when you reach out to somebody or you initiate it. But I feel like there are moments in our chart or, you know, where we do, I've initiated and it's like a conversation or I've reached out to people and it was great. <laughs> well, it was, but tell me how you, like, I'll tell you how I identify with the invitation. Maybe you can tell me yours because I'm always eager to learn more. But the way that I have define an invitation for projectors for us in general is only when we're trying to give guidance that's like it for me if i'm trying i only really need an invitation if i'm trying to give someone advice and only a singular person if i'm trying to give advice to the web to billy nobody yeah. i'm not directing my energy at someone i'm just yeah. like here's here's the bucket and i'm just throwing it into the ether yes and so like even when i'm coaching clients that are projectors i'm like you can initiate conversations. You don't need to wait for the invitation, provided you don't make up a story about yourself, provided you don't make their silence mean something about you, provided you don't need them to reply so that you feel recognized. Oh, I feel like there's some fifth line wisdom there as well. But yes, like the invitation is when you're moving energy with somebody specifically and I use that metaphor because I don't know like this game operation it's almost like you're when you're moving energy with someone when you're guiding there Mm -hmm. needs to be consent because it's one-on-one it's deep work and if you're not it's like like it doesn't feel good for you it zaps the other person yes you don't realize that you're saying the exact metaphor that I have been also using for years we're a surgeon as projectors and I'm like Yes, right. That energetic, because I have felt moments where unsolicited advice, like for anybody, it doesn't land, right? But it's even worse when you're with our energy. It's worse when it comes in. from a projector. Yes. It's worse yes. when the unsolicited advice comes from a like, yes. can, can you Can you tell when someone's trying to give you advice? And I'm like, oh, you you must be a projector, love. Like, oh, yes. I guess I'm feeling it. Like, it feels worse than if a generator or manifest. Yes, of because of the penetrative aura. Like, you know, those mechanics, learning about it, it makes so much sense. But how I show up in business, on social media, it's like, I recognize myself. This is my platform. You're coming into my home, my office, and you're sharing either you like it, you don't like it. But it's not as, because I got a lot of people come to me at the beginning or even things I read online like, oh, your business sucked because nobody invited you to start a business. Or you moved houses when you shouldn't have because nobody invited you to move. And I'm like, wait, wait. I don't wait. get, moving. I I don't get, get it. I don't get it. I really don't get it either. I'm like, who is gonna, who's going to know what's good for you other than you? If this place to has me, that's toxic so mold, boring. right? Right. Also, again, as an undefined, as an undefined G center, you you're the only one who can feel into whether an environment is good for you. Like, I think the quote unquote only person, it's like big air quotes, that could be invited to move would be us defined G centers. But you guys are so sensitive to the environment. Like, yeah. you wouldn't be able to be invited. In my opinion, I'm like, why would you need an invitation to move? This also sounds like giving our power away. Like, so much of it, take it like it d- that, literally. And that puts me off. <laughs> but I also oh, was I- very careful of sharing. Because at the beginning, when I started sharing, I was still, you know, being comfortable in my expression. And I saw the right and wrong things. And I still get people once in a while in my blog that are like, this is a cult. Or how dare you say this? You are wrong. And I'm like... Sometimes I leave it up. I was like, people can read. I'm not here to censor, but it's also my place. I can delete. There's this person on Pinterest that comments on every post I have and they are 
private. So I see the notification, but I can't really see what she writes. But I can tell like, this is ridiculous, like fifth lines and personas. Everybody's like, they're almost like correcting everything I say. And I'm like, why are you? And then I block oh, her account. That, that tenth line is triggering them. <laughs> oh, your tenth gate is triggering them. Maybe also the thirty-nine, the provocation yeah. for my shares, whatever. Yeah. And then they created another account because I blocked them. I'm like, are you literally spending so much time? But we're not having a conversation because it's not like they're they're commenting from a private account. It's not like she's them are inviting me for a conversation it's never that it's so one-sided and I'm like whatever your beef is I don't want it <laughs> like how is that healthy you're just screaming from a screen and writing rude things like what am I like what are you doing with your time and then I see their profile and they're supposed to be a healer or whatever I'm like something is really unhealed I'm judgy right now like my INFJ is coming like I'm judging you and I'm also like keeping my boundary <laughs> Oh my God. But I love that projection feel that you've just described where it's really like, like it is that provocation and it is that like fight and it is the like tense gate in there where it's just like, mm, just ruffle some feathers. And like, cause you do have a couple of fifth lines to find in your, um, in your yeah, chart, in right? Chart. So there's going to be people who are like, Oh, I don't like what she does. And that's like similar to what I described earlier, when people just stop talking to me or they don't speak to me because I had a certain look on my face and they're assuming that I didn't want to be talked to. I'm like, why don't you just ask me, <laughs> have a conversation? <laughs> yes. That's what I, that's what I mean. I'm like, if you really do care about this, if you think I'm, you know, miss sharing information, Wrong. that is not, yes, let's have a conversation. Don't just comment and hide be behind your private profile. <laughs> like, anyway, so I'm, like, I'm clearly, like, triggered, but I'm like, it's okay. And, like, clearly there is some, I've been afraid of being seen, of being recognized. So, you know, some of the things that I work through, and I think if it started at the very start of my career, I would have, like, in my business, I would have been like, shut the yeah. business down. <laughs> like, no, do not yeah. be seen ever again. Now I think I've built the capacity of, like, hmm, of expanding. like. Have you, as well as you grew in your business, like built that capacity to, to be like, people are not going to understand me all the time. Most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time I'm still in the process of it. I think I will forever be in the process of it. Cause I think, you know, where six lines get to like have their three phases, for instance, I think all of the rest of us just have this constant theme. And I think do I think every lion gets over their shadow? No, I don't think so. But Sorry, I Sorry, somebody's knocking one minute. Somebody wants to come in? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> intermission, intermission, real life things. Intermission, pee break. Sorry. <laughs> Apologies <laughs> about that. <laughs> no, you're absolutely fine. It's not an issue. I just forgot what I was saying. Me too. Two, two open heads. And I was just... <laughs> capacity being misunderstood in business <laughs> being misunderstood oh yeah well done I don't know already like I've already lost my like I said I could just like talk I was like we were somewhere somewhere juicy and then I hear this little shy knock that's almost like is it wind or is it somebody trying to talk to me it's like <laughs> I hate those knocks I'm like can you like be be like one or the Aggressive. other like black and white please like, yeah. like either design? don't knock or just like be knock. confident so about it yeah because they're like i don't want to disturb she's recording her podcast i'm so sorry so it's like uh. it's like too late you're already <laughs> disturbed <laughs> anyway no it's not an issue whatsoever um i think the theme is always going to be there i think that's the beautiful like you can look at it as a blessing or i think you can look at it as a curse but i like the fact that we have like high and low expressions of our chart and I think that's what makes the whole human design experiment so important is not that we're constantly having to look into how do we always live the highest expression is like how do we live 70 percent of ourselves in that highest mm -hmm. expression because like if 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 we're always striving for a hundred percent of enlightenment and being the best version like we wouldn't we wouldn't know when enough is enough, if that's the case, because we need to feel sad to understand what our happy feels like. We need we need a baseline. Mm. And so 
do I always get the projection right? No, no, I don't. I still succumb to it. Have I gotten better? Yes. Are the periods shorter? A hundred percent. Do I feel really confident what I do? Yeah. Periods when I feel like I don't? <laughs> totally. <laughs> Right, yeah, it's right. it's become better. It's definitely become better. Especially like the last over the last year I've really even more so stepped in. Um I think also like the way that um one of the gates, like one of the big gates, was it the Saturn that recently moved or the Nep like one of the like long gates recently moved out of its orbit and that was a big theme for me in the transits. And when that moved last year, it was like, okay, well I can that energy can release itself now for me. Oh. But I don't remember which one it was. But it was yeah. like one of the longer planets that takes like... Forever. I don't remember either. But I think you also bring into light the importance of like, we're going to be influenced by things. There are themes that we are working through that we have no control. It could be family. It could be ancestral. It could be health, whatever relationship, mm. you know, that things are going to get stirred out because that is the nature of life. Yeah. <laughs> that is the seasons. And also understanding that when we spend so much time trying to be something, we are actually not and I think, you know, human design so much, like we're so mental thinking about how can I be a hundred percent? Can I, how can I be positive that we're not because we're overcompensating already? Right. Exactly. And I think this also brings to light another thing where I think you probably share this with me as well is the human design, what I've learned, and this is part of my design, part of my de definition is this idea of struggle. We need struggle mm -hmm. in our lives, but not pain and suffering. Right. And I think that's what human design teaches very well is that struggle creates meaning. Right. Remember, like the gate yeah. of like struggle and finding meaning. I'm like, it's literally part of the design. And so we shouldn't shy away. It doesn't feel good, of course, to struggle. Yeah. Of course, it yeah. doesn't. But it creates meaning. But when it becomes suffering and pain, then yeah, maybe we should yes. reevaluate. Yes. Like I have so many placements in my 38 like four, I think, in an undefined route. So I've always fought for something. And maybe that was what gave me purpose. I'm like fighting for something. I want to change the world. I'm using advertising, charity, show them communication yeah, to yeah, care. Yeah. Like, you know, I always had something to fight, but it was inconsistent. And yeah. with the undefined G, I was fighting for everything and anything whenever. But then overextending myself, fighting because I just had to fight for something. For the sake of it, yeah. For the sake of it. And it just wasn't healthy. Well, wasn't sustainable in the long run. Like, I think it was very healthy because I was very much following myself and very third line in the first <laughs> 30 years. I was like handing plant pamphlets out there about Amnesty International, Greenpeace, you know, just because I wanted to channel that energy somewhere. And now in my second phase, perhaps I'm like, oh, I am fighting for things. I don't have to yell it at the top of my roof. I share it when I feel pulled to. I don't have to feel guilty that I'm not doing enough because then the the melancholy can sometimes be like, well, this is something you care for. You should do more. You should raise more funds. You can, and I'm like, if I have no energy, if I'm depleting myself and telling others to share and raise funds, like how is that helping anybody? I need an adult. <laughs> yeah, I need an adult. Tell me what to do with all these feelings. <laughs> oh my god, yes. I love these insights, honestly. It's it's so nice to have like almost the opposite explained and almost the opposite of what it is. Cause it's almost really reaffirming for me because we share like half a design essentially. So like, oh yeah, I like I feel that like with a slight slight nuance. I'm like, oh yeah, that's really cool. I love that. I love that you're reflecting that too. Cause I'm like, oh yeah, this is cool. I get to learn about it from your conscious perspective of your conscious of like, I'm a provoke, I'm a fight. I know when it comes out. Me, like, I don't know. Sometimes something just brings a fight out. Otherwise, I'm like, I have no energy for that. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Amazing. Ah! <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Adina, thank you so much for this conversation. I know we're going to have so many more, but yes. for those that are listening, I know some are interested in growing their business and like getting to sales and marketing. Tell us more about what you offer. What are some of the programs you have? Oh, thank you. Um, I've got a few programs. So at the moment, I'm having a really cool sales program that includes human design. So it's like a nice sales study, like 
sales, how to sell with purpose, which surprised and we just talk about the fact that that's part of my design, right? How to sell with purpose, how to not be sleazy, how to sell without when you're an introvert. Um, and so I use human design aspects and belief work and energetics and all of these cool things. So that's what I'm promoting at the moment um, that I'm really, really proud of. And I'm also doing a intensive at the moment where it's like also human design. OK, well, let's build out your growth strategy using yeah. your human design. So it's oh. like the things that I'm working on at the moment is so fun. Oh, so sure. I'll link them so that they can find it as well. Where can they find you on the socials? Instagram at Adina Kroll. That's like where I hang out the most. I always want to say Facebook as well, but I really don't hang out. I use Facebook as membership platforms at the moment for the groups because unfortunately their groups just are cost effective and they work. They're built very well, but I just don't use Facebook a lot. Um, or my website at adinacrawl.com. So Instagram, always shoot me a message. I'm always approachable. This is what I'm always yeah, saying. She, like, send me a DM. I'm, honestly, I'm nice. <laughs> she is. She's so open. And even her reels are so much fun when she's talking about business. Like, hey, it's such a lighthearted approach to business, which sometimes they're like, got to do this, got to max out. And you're like, you can, you don't have to write that email right now. <laughs> or you're like, you can take a nap. <laughs> Yeah, but like, I just wish more people, I'm like, we're all just taking this shit far too seriously. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. I need that. Sometimes I'm like, I need to do this. Like, I haven't showed up. And then afterwards, like, I, I'm depleted. I can, I'm writing the same sentence in over an hour. I think that's a sign <laughs> to rest. Yeah. yeah, this is not helping me right now either. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we're also here to help ourselves. Like, I think that's also such a nice lesson to remember. Yes. Oh, I love this. I can't wait for more conversations like these. We are not done. I know. I know. <laughs> Is there anything, any wisdom that's bubbling up for either projectors or something, anything that you're feeling pulled to share right now before we wrap up? Before we wrap up, no, just have more fun. It's something that came up a lot of the time is um, I need to hear this myself and I needed to coach my clients on this all week already. It's like this idea of like, just do something silly, do something that's fun, do something that you enjoy without justifying it, without because mm -hmm. that'll give us motivation, that'll give us energy, that'll make our work go faster. And I needed to hear that. My clients needed to hear it. So I'm hoping you needed to hear that too. Me too. Me too. Thank you, Adina. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to the whole and unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect women, check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.